I consider him the epitome of Zambia. There is no Zambia without KK. I regard him or consider him in the class of Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King. He's a living legend, I must say. He's a living legend. I have to give it to the old man. He doesn't know if that's the right term, when to quit. Because he just goes and goes. After office, it's like he never left. I just thank God, young man, that he has made it possible for me to live this long and be able to help reshape this nation into something wonderful. I consider him the epitome of Zambia. I look at what he has done for this country. I think we owe him quite a great deal. That's the person we admire his life. We always would like to be like him. Kaunda was, was, was actually he was a brand. He was the brand. I remember. Yeah, right. Yes. But those days, I mean, he was he was on the money. He was on the coins. He was he was and he was powerful. Kaunda is a, quite a special man. He fought for independence. Zambia, a landlocked country in South Central Africa, home to the mighty Zambezi River and the Victoria Falls. A former British colony. Zambia gained independence on 24th October 1964. Kenneth David Kaunda was the first president of independent Zambia. He ruled Zambia through a one-party state system until the democratic wave swept through the African continent. Kaunda conceded defeat in free and fair elections on the 2nd of November 1991. An African leader's life is considered to end after they leave office. But this has not been the case with Kaunda. This year, Kaunda celebrated his 88th birthday. And from the look of things, he is not slowing down. Happy birthday, dear Musician, sportsman, author, and now fashion icon, Kaunda is out and about. What keeps him going? That's what we want to find out. My name is Kenneth Kaunda, first president of Zambia, for my family, whose father is a reverend, whose mother is a teacher. It's got a kamalafte, <laughs> You know, there's so much so in the grandfather laughter. So innocent and so real. Kaunda is one leader who believed in visiting communities. He would visit an ordinary ward chairman of his party in a township, and all of us would gather. He would visit a market, and everybody would go there. He would visit our schools, and lining up for him was so much fun. Waiting, sometimes you don't even see his face, but you would be sure of seeing his handkerchief. We would be asked to line the roads and they would give us these, these nice little Zambian flags and he would come with his motorcade and he would slow down, take out his handkerchief, you know, would flash his biggest smile and he would wave at us. I forget I am Kenneth Kaunda's grandson because it's just something that I am. But often it's people that remind me who I am. Okay, this is... When he remembers me, I'm surprised. He knows my name. But yes, he knows who we are. 
He doesn't forget who we, he doesn't forget his grandkids. There was one time I do remember, I did have a long talk with granddad, and it was very insightful. He told me I asked him, did you, is this what you expected after independence? He just laughed. <laughs> From the media perception, you know, this is an interviewer's interviewee. It makes you look good. His ability to drive home the issue of international you know, you know, peace. The man reminded me of, uh, of Gandhi. You know what I mean? All he wanted was to see this world free. I uh, met uh, Dr. Kaonda in 1960 in uh, Osaka. Talking to him, you know, I, I, I got inspired and I got uh, inspiration that uh, this was a man who was fighting for something that we as uh, Africans in those days you know, believed in. What has helped me to shape my life is the teaching love God your creator with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. As to that one, he has made in his image like you. His teaching is love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. When I got involved in the struggle for independence against British colonialism, I realized we had 73 tribes in my country, Zambia today, Northern Indigenous those days. Indigenous tribes, but new tribes came in, the English, the Welsh, the Scottish, the Indian, Pakistan, many colors, many tribes how to shape our nation into something. The struggle that uh, he asked all of us to wage you know, uh, was militant resistance to colonial rule, but no violence. You know. He was not an advocate of violence, and he was that greatly uh, uh, inspired in this regard by people like Mahatma Gandhi of India and Jawaharlal Nehru. For a man who had spent so much time being harassed by the colonial government and uh, being put into prison, uh, still came out without bitterness and still said that, you know, we should not adopt violence as one of our tactics in terms of winning uh, national independence for our country. We began to develop along those lines in the struggle on Zambia One Nation. After the struggle, after winning our independence, still on Zambia One Nation. Now, young man, where this approach is accepted, there's a genuine peace. Where it is not accepted, disaster, chaos, death in thousands. In terms of the One Zambia, One Nation, um, it is something that not, is not just a history. It's laid the foundation of the unity of Zambia. That wasn't just Dr. Kaunda's motto. It wasn't, it was a, it's a Zambian motto. One Zambia, one nation. Because some of the problems that we are witnessing sometimes are also as a result of departing from our own motto, which says that one Zambia, one nation. It doesn't matter whether you're Bemba, you're Tonga, you're Lozi, Luvale, whatever tribe you are, you're a Zambian. He sacrificed, first of all, his own personal life, the lives of Zambians and Zambia as a whole, to fight to ensure that the other neighboring countries also um, attained their political independence. It wasn't easy. Uh, Zambia lost lives. Zambia spent money. We still have to do more. In the PTA sub-region, we have the South African albatross, the abominable, archaic, and morbid system of apartheid that is being perpetuated 
by the South African racists. Dr. Kaunda's vision at that time was not just that Zambia should be free, but that uh, once Zambia was free, Zambia should also actively participate in the liberation uh, struggle to assist Zambia's neighbors attain uh, national independence. And uh, he made it clear that uh, uh, a union government would uh, support liberation struggles in Mozambique, in uh, Angola, in southern Rhodesia then, in South Africa against apartheid, in Southwest Africa as Namibia was then called, in Guinea-Bissau. He was greatly inspired in this regard by uh, the late in Kwame Nkrumah, you know, who always said, uh, the first president of Ghana always said that uh, for as long as any inch of Africa was not free, no African had the right to walk the streets of Africa feeling free in their own smaller countries unless the bigger continent uh, had become free. <laughs> What it means, let us have one heart, one spirit, we work together so that we can develop. I use music to reach out in many areas of human life. I love my music and uh, on my guitar I play many hymns. I play one or two songs about my dear wife. That girl there means a lot. Can I sing for her? Yeah. I remember the night in your arms underneath the pagan moon Taking away on the pillow pie. The singer, a lover, he definitely loved his Mama Betty, you know, and he still does, you know. That's amazing, if you ask me. His family suffered because during those tours of duty, it means that he was very rare at home. And in that, you cannot uh, forget to bring in the first, first lady, Betty, that she had a very supportive wife. And for him to succeed, Betty must have also played a major role. And equally, I believe her life must be celebrated because she was there for him, looked after the children, and indirectly even looked after us as a nation. I'm sure she gave pep talk, uh, bed pillow advice, which we were not privileged to. I think it's their experience through, from, uh, from during that colonial period that I think has really welded them. Because you don't go through something like that and fall apart, no. After all that, I'm sure it just brought them closer together because they had to stand together. Behind every great man is a, success, is a woman, right? And I figure, Betty Kaunda is that successful one for my grandfather. He's a great example um, of the fact that it's actually possible to grow old with your lover and hold on to her. This great creator God made a arrangement of man and woman. It is an extremely important source of life. And we have to respond to that challenge. We have to respond to that challenge in many ways. And thank God, my wife is 84. I'm 88. 65 years together. 
the, whenever they are, when they are kind enough to invite me to a wedding, I point fingers at them. <laughs> Service to God's children comes first with respect. I get invited today by various, various organizations because they believe that they can only invite me if they, if they, they, they believe or they see that I will accept what they're doing. And there's something you can do, I'll try and help. If there's nothing I can do, can I look around there somewhere else? Where can, can, can I come and help? If there is a, 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 gate, a gate that way, I'll do that. In my heart, for a while, far away, till we meet once again, you and I. We shed cheer, not a tear, make it clear. He's had an impact um, when it comes to, um, say, behavioral change. He's, he's, been, he's played a key role, for example, in taking the message out there to the young people um, about HIV AIDS. I, I lost a brilliant son to AIDS. And uh, when he put him rest two weeks after that, I thought as the leader of the nation, I should come out and announce that our son had died of AIDS. As the leaders, we had a duty to show that we were fighting this discrimination against this disease. We are fighting AIDS, and not just for ch children, but the whole, whole, whole fight. Treatment is very important. We have a few clinics here and there, but we don't have enough to cover many parts of this country. We have little work of this on this in Nigeria. We have little work on this in South Africa. Don't let the walking stick fool you, he's still going. I've done events and, and he's been there and every time you call upon and it's a humble honor and pleasure to call upon our founding father first, Republican president, Dr. <laughs> Kenneth David Kaunda. He comes to the microphone running. Soccer is my game. I grew up in that one. And uh, I don't think I have, I can raise a team of people at 88. I'm still a golfer. Uh, I love the game. So I do run. Every week I must run so many times. Inside my bedroom, I do a lot of exercises. Um, that helps me to keep awake, alive. And uh, when I Overeat sometimes, I get worried. Speaking for myself personally, but I know even a lot of uh, people out there are, are very, very encouraged by Dr. Kaunda's choice of, um, you know, food. He, he's a vegetarian. In our struggle, because of 
racism, even in the business, we were taught, we were forced, rather not taught, we were forced to buy, to purchase our requirements through pigeon holes. And uh, we had to fight that. We are even in churches. Some areas, the only church is for whites only. Christian faith. And that our discrimination made me decide to fight. Lead, do, um, add to my mobilization of the people. At the stage 23, I decided that it's not, it's not right to continue doing this. Eating this, eating this meat which I get through the pigeon hole. Hell <laughs> not. So I stopped taking that. So I've continued now to depend on vegetables, <clears throat> beans and so on. They keep me very fit. It is something I admire. It is something that I would wear, and I'm glad you've mentioned that it is now available. Absolutely. This is like uh, the one that you wear for functions because always for functions you want to have um, a dark, a dark suit. It's got the um, the barcode with Kenneth Kaunda in it, and it's 108 wool. It's got uh, space where to put the two pens. And we also branded the pens for his birthday. Kenneth Kaunda, 88 at SBM. One Zambia. Uh, this, this has been a 10 year plan um, where we, we, we thought of what can we do to just bring uh, 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 to basics the things that we would like to you know, to do for, for great people. The last uh, three months, we had a meeting with the, uh, his last born daughter, Cheswa. The following day, I asked her, can, can I have his suits? So following day, she brought the suits. I looked at them, I saw the features. I took pictures, sent them to the manufacturer. I, I traveled to the manufacturer to explain what it is. So they were now making the sample. When one is made into an icon, well, he's like, he has the Midas touch. Everything he touches will turn to gold. So it doesn't matter whether he's rocking check shirts or shorts, they will turn to gold. And believe me, they will become fashion icons because of who he is and what he has done. People want to wear his stuff, why? Because it associates themselves with a great part of history. We did modify it so that you know, anybody can, can wear it. The, 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 the old guys, his, his comrades can wear it. Um, the, the modern person can wear it. People who wear a t-shirt can wear it. People who want to wear a tie can still wear it. Kaunda is not just a Zambian brand, he actually is an international brand. You know, wherever you go, any, you know, go to Jamaica, go to America, go to Australia, they know that that's Kenya Kaunda is an international brand actually and he's now becoming a fashion icon. Because if you go to Kenya, they call that suit the Kaunda suit. You remind me of my great late friend and colleague and comrade in our struggle, Julius Kambrak Nyerere. We were meeting one day in, I think it was in Mbeya, I think. We were having a meeting of um, frontline states. He was dressed in, in my suit. I was dressing in my suit. And he said, you know, these Kenyan people are very business-minded. And they are conscious. They said, now, but we can't teach Kaunda. And if he finds that we are 
using his suit uh, in business, he will sue us. So what we do is, let's call it counter suit. And they call it counter suit. So the counter doesn't become angry if when he sees it. <laughs> This is what we are developing for the for the ladies. So we've ordered one with the black buttons, one with the silver buttons, one short sleeves, one uh, uh, three quarters, and one long sleeves. So I'm sure it will be in the in the fabric of the kaunda suit. To have to say, oh, I'm wearing a kaunda suit. <laughs> My God, that's yeah. one of the greatest men, men in Africa. There is no Zambia without KK. Go to South Africa, a lot of people will celebrate Madiba for what he, what he did to South Africa. But in this country, people do not necessarily celebrate him. But I personally, I regard him or consider him in the class of Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King. We must take advantage of his existence. He's a living legend, I must say. He's a living legend. By now, we should be talking about a Kaunda library, things like that which is not there, and uh, we shouldn't say until he dies. We, we want him to see some of these things. Why don't we build a massive monument, you know, of him, really? So? Yes, yeah, like what they've done uh, in Santan for Mandela. I mean, we can build one like that. He's the first president of the sovereign reign Republic of Zambia. So that when the future generations look upon and say, who is this man? with his handkerchief. I suggest they should build it and it should be, you know, I mean, just touch will be like, people will be looking, who's this great man? Yeah. Great son of Zambia. I have to give it to the old man. He doesn't know, if that's the right term, when to quit. Because he just goes and goes. After office, it's like he never left. He just keeps on going. It's like someone hasn't told him that you can't do this anymore, you're too old. No, he doesn't know that. He just keeps on serving and serving and serving after office. The story of KK has not been you know, told in at all. The world needs to know the story of KK. The world needs to know that even in troubled times, in troubled you know, worlds where we are faced with war, where we're faced with uh, anguish, where we are faced with hatred, there's still a man who loves you and me, irrespective of where you come from, irrespective of the color. It is very rare in these times. It's time the world stood up, you know, and you know, give credit to this great man, the son of Africa, son of Zambia, and the son of the world. I just thank God, young man, that he has made it possible for me to live this long and be able to help through perhaps my mama's help in a way, small way, to help my colleagues who are in office today shape, reshape this nation into something wonderful.